Colbeth. I'm head of Detectors Engineering at Varex. I'm Denise Hoban. I'm European Sales Manager for Varex. I'm Keith Gray, and I'm the director for all the detector software. So with the expansion of our product portfolio, we've seen CMOS come in. And a question we often get from our customers is, you know, how does CMOS fit into the portfolio? Is there room for CMOS and Amorphous? Yeah, there's definitely room for both. I mean, CMOS is coming in now at the high end of the product range. It, it does have some great advantages. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, the low dose performance is unparalleled, but really the the advantage of CMOS is it enables low dose at high resolution. Morphous silicon is very good low dose performance, but the, there's kind of a limit to the resolution you can get. Okay. And you know, CMOS has this point, it's, it's placed in high end applications with high frame rates. However, Morphous silicon, and a lot of these applications of Morphous silicon, 30 frames per second is fine. Yeah. It fits that application. And if, you know, their Morphous silicon are our image quality keeps improving, and we can we definitely have a spot for that. Are there differences in the flexibility of the manufacturing? Well, CMOS is a much more expensive uh, technology to build, okay. and amorphous silicon. That's sort of why it's ubiquitous. Um, you know, it's it's a cost-effective solution. Um, but if you really need that additional performance, like very low lag, um, and uh, and the high resolution, then it's worth. You know, there are applications that demand that, and that's where you want to use CMOS. I suppose at this stage, Amorphous is a very proven technology. Do you feel that CMOS is fully accepted by the market? I think it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty well accepted now, and it's gaining momentum, it seems. And, and we have some customers who have uh, done very well with our CMOS products, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's growing. So. so we're shipping more than 20,000 detectors now per year. What possibilities does that level of scale Bring us. Yeah, I mean, what's really happened with that scale is that the price and the cost of the technology has come way down. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the parts of the market that was inaccessible before was the very bottom, let's say the low tier II based uh, market. Uh, market. And now we have both the performance and the cost structure that allows us to go after uh, replacing the II based uh, units. And, uh, and there's big advantages in flat panels compared to II. So the mm -hmm. image quality is uniform edge to edge. You don't have veiling glare. You don't have uh, magnet, you know, distortions due to the, the magnetic field of the earth. And so the image quality is much better and we're at a cost that competes with that kind of old technology. Yes. You know, the other thing I'd add to that, 20,000 detectors a year now that we're producing, we've had to automate a lot of the functionality of the factory. So that's, that's sure. yielded us to, to be able to produce at a, at a higher rate and a lower cost with the, uh, the advent of doing all this automation and our testing in the factory. Okay. You know, maybe just to add to the, the scale um, idea is that not only do we have the scale in manufacturing, but we have the global presence to support our customers all over the world. So we have service centers in China, service centers in Europe, and, and also the US and the Americas. And so, as customers adopt this, let's say, new technology for them versus, for example, the AI, we have the local support that will enable them to succeed and, uh, and service their products. Yeah, I think that's very important. Yeah. And um, our global reach, I think, is very valuable to our customers because we can leverage that to help their kind of global presence by exactly. us. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that our scale brings us is that the fact that we have such a breadth to our portfolio so detectors really for all applications. And I think one of the um, important things is that our customers, if they integrate one detector and then have a need for a different one, it's very easy then to, to change the detector based on the existing work that they've done. Yeah, that's, that's one of our major focuses is to try to reduce the time of market to our customers. And so we, we do that by trying to keep the same interface for all of our panels all the detectors. Every detector has relatively the exact same API interface, so when the customer comes in and actually integrates to, to one of these detectors, moving to a different size is, is really a minor amount of adjustments on their side. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's good from a, a life cycle point of view. There's always options for different detectors. Yeah. yeah. And, sorry, yeah, yeah, it allows them to expand to new, panel, new detectors when they come out readily and, and, and easily. Again, it gives them 
to time the market quicker. Mm -hmm. It also reduces a lot of their their validation and verification efforts. Since yeah. most of the software stays the same in the API interface, they don't have to go and re-verify or validate all of their, so their software. And you know, <clears throat> to that total cost of ownership, I mean, these, these products last for a very long time, but there's always obsolescence issues. And um, this common platform or this kind of uniform platform that uh, interfaces that we have allows the customers to migrate from, let's say the older products to a next generation relatively easily mm -hmm. and to um, you know not only improve the uh, products but get over the obsolescence issues yeah so. I think that's important there's such a, a there's so many manufacturers available now and people um, our customers are really focusing on total cost of ownership and um, the return on investment because it's and it's not just about that there's also a very human side to these detectors and the work that they do right. and the effect any downtime anything like that has a big effect not just from a financial point of view, but from a very human point of view. Yeah, one, one moment I, uh, I, I thought about the, our installed base of just cardiac detectors, mm. and I realized, I did a calculation, where our detectors are uh, being used to treat or you know, uh, help more than a million people a year. Just, just that one application alone. I mean, so it's just, it's kind of staggering the number of people that we're touching uh, with these products. Um, you know, maybe one other thing I'd like to add about the total cost of ownership is that Barracks, we do have the broadest portfolio, and we've also been in this market longer than anybody. And so our installed base is more than 100,000 detectors, and we have a very long history of standing behind all of those. People, we have detectors, uh, Keith and I, uh, we worked on that are installed in cardiac systems and cardiovascular systems that have been out since the early 90s. Wow. And we're still supplying upgrades yep. to those yeah. systems. Yeah, so. so as like Windows comes out and does an upgrade, sometimes that might have an impact on the on the OEM system or our software. Yeah. So we'll go in and update that, uh, that package yeah. to keep it up to date. So our OEM customers really know that we'll stand behind that and you know, they, they don't have to worry that uh, we're not gonna, they won't have support. Yeah, it's so. important, it's very important. So we've, we've discussed you know, the breadth of portfolio, we discussed total cost of ownership. Um, I think another extremely important thing that we all enjoy is the collaboration with our customers. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, you know, as an engineering team, we we work very closely with our customers' engineering teams mm. to you know, make sure that the product is integrated properly into their system to yes. try to make that happen as smoothly and as seamlessly as possible. Again, you know, trying to get them through that stage to get time to market as, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we develop some very close relationships with our end customers. I think what I find is sometimes as our customers um, are expanding into different applications or different fields, they very often come to us to ask for our experience in that field. That's very Which true. I mean, so. because we have this breadth of uh, products were in every modality in medicine and also industrial applications. Mm -hmm. And so customers who are new to that modality, actually a lot of times we know more about at least the detector side of it and maybe the tube side of it than, uh, than they do. And so they rely on our expertise really to you know, sort of get into that market. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said earlier, I mean, I think that's one of the most fun things for us is to, mm -hmm. to work with our customers to achieve like a whole system. We, you know, it's really gratifying to see the, the final product. So. It, it, it's exciting when a customer comes to us and they know we've got 20 years of experience in the field. And so they'll approach us with a new problem. And like Rick was saying, we get to kind of stretch ourselves to come up with some creative new solutions to solve problems to the customer. And it could comes from, you know, the fact that we, did, we have all this experience in all these different modalities and 20 years doing. Twenty, so. it's thirty years. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so. It's good. It's, uh, the people out in the field, yeah. um, the salespeople, the, the product um, integration team. You know, we always know that there's somebody like a base who has the information that we need, and that's really quite nice. And that's true whether it be tubes, panels, collimators, anything to do with the system. So that's quite nice. Well, I mean, it's a good point though that now we're. You know, it's more than just detectors. We have this ability yes. to, in, you know, to bring a whole subsystem yep. uh, to the customers, and that 
you know, is even more valuable. They can get to market quicker and yes. really rely on our expertise in a, you know, a whole dip, uh, a number of different areas, That's not it. just the one, let's say. This is it. I think we're at the stage now where we can take a lot of the hard work from our customers. Yeah. And by doing, we have all the elements of the subsystem. We can bring all those together, That's qualify right. them, and then supply the subsystem. Yeah. So that's a nice stage to be at. So we've spoken about amorphous silicon, we've spoken about CMOS, and then we have IGZO. How does that fit into the portfolio? So we have CMOS at the high end, we have amorphous silicon, let's say the value tier now, um, and IGZO brings this ability to get CMOS-like performance, um, but at a cost structure that's closer to amorphous silicon. And one way to think about it is, both CMOS and IGCO enable higher resolution at the same kind of dose that we can achieve with amorphous silicon. So very simple rule of thumb I try to talk to our customers about is amorphous silicon is very good at say 200 microns, mm -hmm. 200 to 150. IGCO is going to fill in from 150 uh, to 100 and below 100 microns you're going to want CMOS. CMOS yeah. And so I think it, there's a role for all these technologies depending on you know sort of what the cost requirements and the performance requirements of the modality. Yeah. There will be some you know, additional benefits with, with the IGZO. It, it's gonna come with a smaller pixel, just like Rick had said, so the mm -hmm. resolution goes up. But that also means that the bandwidth's gonna go up. The amount of data that we're gonna be able to pull in off the panel is gonna go higher. And so we're doing some innovative stuff now to increase the bandwidth and to, to the interfaces. So, and one of the other things that uh, Keith and his team are bringing uh, to this IGCO platform mm -hmm. is we're moving all the image corrections that we would normally do in software outside of the panel, inside the panel. And what that uh, results in is that the interface, our customer's interface to the panel is much simpler. And it makes it much more, uh, let's say, straightforward to, in, to support different operating systems that our customers might use, like Linux versus Windows. Uh, Windows. Right, okay. yeah, so, so are we moving more towards an intelligent panel? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this this all comes down to making that, like Rick said, the interface to our OEM far far simpler, far easier yeah. to integrate. Time to market again is the focus here. Yeah. We're trying to get that time to market for our OEM or the customer to be as soon quick as possible. Okay. And so that's what this will will yield. The fact that it also unloads a lot of the performance issues that. We, might be on the host computer. Their computer no longer has a lot of software, our software running in it. Mm -hmm. And so we're not competing with their resources anymore. Um, the panel's doing all the corrections inside the, the panel and, the, and the, what comes out is a fully corrected image. There's no other processing other than what the OEM's gonna do to, do, to add their, mm -hmm. their benefit to the image processing chain um, as needed. And so. so. I suppose it's a more streamlined system. Yeah. With less areas to troubleshoot. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think it's fair to say we work in a very demanding market, and the demands coming in from our customers really evolve and change, um, and you know we have to respond to that by innovation. Exactly, and honestly, that's what keeps us interested. I mean, yeah. it's a, <coughs> it's really a joy when customers come in and they have problems. They they're not really sure even how it can be solved, and, but we have a lot of technology and a lot of experience and, we, and ideas to help them you know, achieve what they're trying to get to, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I think new technology is, is coming into the field all the time from, from abroad. And so a lot of our customers are looking at this new technology coming and saying, how can we use this? How can we benefit this you know, to help mm -hmm. with you know, diagnosing patients? And so a lot of times that will strike a conversation up with us about, okay, you know, what can we do different? What can we do to enhance this, lower the cost, bring out performance? And that, that's kind of what drives a lot of, you know, us getting up every morning going this to work. It. I think I get the feeling that people enjoy the challenge. Yeah, exactly. And in a, a very fast evolving market, the challenge is just to keep up with the, with the yeah. demands. Right. So that keeps us on changing control. environment of technology. Yes. So. I think it's fair to say that customers come to us looking for solutions to problems that they see or, or demands that they have. Yeah, with an ever-changing world out there, right, and, and new technology coming in all the time, obviously our customers are, 
are looking for innovative solutions to like reduce mm -hmm. cost or break new imaging performance yes. with new technologies that's arriving on the market. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's where we'll get involved. We'll give us a call and say, hey, you know, what can you guys do to help us? And with all of our experience, we're able to jump in and, yeah. and, and start figuring out new innovative ways to kind of use some of this new technology and provide new solutions to them. And again, our you know now our portfolio is so wide, not just in detectors, but in uh, sources and collimators and high voltage cables and software. I mean, our ability to bring solutions uh, to customers is you know larger than ever. Yeah.